fishing in the Caribbean. Like other industries such as agriculture and tourism, fishing accounts for a wide cross-section of interest groups. Today, I will try to explore the fishing industry in the Caribbean. Before I continue, I ask that you remember to, like share and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section below. This will help this channel grow. I appreciate it very much. So let's look at fishing. The Caribbean experiences a warm tropical climate. Several marine fish use the waters throughout the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico. The early occupation of the Caribbean saw the Amerindians calling the Caribbean home. During this time of civilization, fish, hunting and farming were the underlying means of sustenance. Fast forward to today, fishing still plays an integral role in the region's occupants' daily life. Fishing is considered one of the oldest means of harvesting produce from nature. Several countries throughout the Caribbean practices fishing as a means of economic sustenance. Most if not all countries found within the Caribbean practices some aspects of fishing. Whilst fishing is seen as a lucrative business, its capacity to expand and develop throughout the Caribbean is somewhat limited by several factors. Some of these factors include but is not limited to the practice of fisher folks fishing beyond their individual political boundaries. Examples can be seen in instances where Hondurans and Colombians are caught several times and prosecuted for fishing beyond national and international waters. In addition to the above mentioned, large vessels have been catching huge catches leaving little or no fish stock to either reproduce or for locals throughout the region to catch and use in trade. This has resulted in several fish stock becoming small in volume and thus decreasing the intake of fish for the locals throughout the region. In a desperate attempt to earn monies to care for their families, several fisher folks have taken the risk of fishing much further at sea, only to be harassed by pirates whom would take their catch, and sometimes their boat engine along with any other valuables within the vessel. Some fisher folk have also complained of the high instances of theft of fish pots left overnight. Fisher folks have been sharing that they would lose hundreds of pounds of fish per week as a result of this activity. As a result of the unreliability of the industry and the limited resources available to the fisher folks throughout the region, several fisher folks would venture at sea without proper gear. This is a risk taken regularly as they try to cut cost in equipment and sometimes falling victims to bad weather, limited communication devices and in some cases lacks the skill to swim. Oh yes, some fisher folk throughout the Caribbean cannot swim. In the event where their vessels are damaged and they would be required to swim to safety, this is like an impossible task. Some fisher folk practice fishing practices which are considered dangerous to both themselves and the fish. The dynamiting of fish is considered one such practice. In addition, some fisher folk also illegally fish in wetlands or what in some states are referred to as swamps or breeding ground for marine life. This makes it difficult and in some cases prevents the growth of the general fish population. This practice will in the future results in fisher folks now have to venture further at sea to catch fish. Most Caribbean fishermen ply their trade from small boats, 4 to 11 meters. These small craft, often without protection from sun or rain, are forced to remain very close to shore, seldom going more than 16 kilometers offshore. Fisher folks throughout the Caribbean usually use the following methods to extract fish stock from the water, fillet, gill, nets, trawling, line fishing, seining, fish pots and reels. The method of fishing depends on the type and size of the fish to be caught. Trawling is used to catch shrimp, caribe, snapper and cavalry. The main catches from seine and gill nets are kingfish, shark and caribe. Fish pot catches are red snappers and jacks. Fishing is a year-round activity in the Caribbean and it directly employs thousands of people. There are several products or produce processed and sold throughout the Caribbean with the use of fish stock. These include but is not limited to herin, tuna, sardine, mackerel, sardine as well as salmon. Not all are found within the Caribbean. A number of different methods of selling are used in the Caribbean. Most small-scale fishermen take some of the catch for their families and sell the rest at the beach. If there is a delay between catching the fish and eating it, then some form of processing has to take place. 
the three processing methods that are common in the Caribbean are 1. Salting, the fish is washed, gutted, salted, then dried in the sun, or in a special electrical drying unit. Among fish salted are salt or salmon, shark, grouper and carite. 2. Smoking, the fish is washed, gutted. A little salt is added, then it is partly cooked over a smoking fire. Herrings and jacks are normally preserved by this method. 3. Fresh fish, the fish is washed, and passed through a machine which coats it with a film of ice. It is then wrapped in foil. It is important that you note that, in terms of landings, the Caribbean is only small scale compared with giant fishing nations such as Japan, the US, Iceland and Spain but it does provide necessary incomes for local economies and some opportunities for foreign vessels. Seafood products are among the most widely traded food commodities in the world, with estimated trade value of around 149.4 billion US dollars for 2020 according to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO's Food Outlook publication data June 2021. The Caribbean islands are strongly dependent on capture negation fisheries resources, which represent a signified negation can contribution to the livelihoods of coastal communities, export earnings, domestic consumption and food security. The sustainable management of this valuable natural resource, as well as ensuring food safety and quality, entails the application of effective seafood traceability systems, which allow producers processors, exporters and negation and consumers to follow the resource from harvest to negation final use throughout the complex seafood value chain. Seafood traceability standards have been established in the past by food safety and quality control initiatives such as Seafood Hack Band WTO Sanitary and Phytosanitary Agreement. However, major markets such as the European Union and the United States of America have adopted legal requirements in order to stop entry of ill fine negation shink products into their markets, but these may require modifications to existing national traceability systems. In order to ensure the legality of capture fisheries and guarantee market access for their commodities, developing countries, including small island developing states, are required to provide their fisheries sector with reliable domestic traceability, legislation and enforcement. Why pay special attention to the fishing industry within the Caribbean? 1. It provides employment. 2. It provides much need protein source in our diet. 3. It facilitate trading with the sale of caught creatures as food to other jurisdictions. 4. It aid in the increase of a country's gross domestic product. Although small, they play an important role in proving employment opportunities and high-protein food for the local populations. On some islands such as the Bahamas, Grenada, and Trinidad, export is important. The industry has changed in the last few years and fishing effort has on the whole grown substantially. In terms of landings, the Caribbean is only small scale compared with giant fishing nations such as Japan, the US, Iceland and Spain but it does provide necessary incomes for local economies and some opportunities for foreign vessels, although it is not one of the world's largest or well-developed commercial fishing areas, the Caribbean helps fuel America's massive demand for fish and seafood and has valuable species such as swordfish and tuna. The fisheries on some of the islands are largely artisanal. Although small, they play an important role in proving employment opportunities and high-protein food for the local populations. On some islands such as the Bahamas, Grenada, and Trinidad, export is important. The industry has changed in the last few years and fishing effort has on the whole grown substantially. The government has developed several programs that have had substantial results. This has mainly been done by improving vessels and introducing more effective gear. Fishing though on many of the islands is still largely unregulated and therefore the result has been a rise in fishing pressure and a decrease in some of the most valuable stocks. One of the main ideas pursued by many islands is to encourage fishermen to shift from heavily fished inshore fisheries to offshore pelagic fisheries which on the whole are still not fully utilized. Fisheries management in the Caribbean can be difficult with over 30 eases to look after. 
In fact the sea area in the Caribbean is smaller than the eases of individual countries such as Brazil, Chile and the US. Many of the islands within the Caribbean have limited statistical programs, limited administration resources, and minimal enforcement capabilities and because of this fisheries management has been difficult to undertake. The Caribbean is also quite important in terms of swordfish. Despite the relatively low quantities actually caught, the Caribbean is important for a number of reasons. One is by catch trends. Longline fishing is a relatively clean fishing gear in comparison to many other gears like trawls and gill nets. There is a significant incidental catch associated with longline fisheries. In some fisheries the incidental catch is an important part of the economic earnings. A recent report found that artisanal fisheries in the Caribbean appear to be affecting some species such as billfish and shark. The second is that although the longline fleets of Caribbean countries are modest, several countries register foreign-owned fishing vessels. But in some cases the complications involved have lead countries to rethinking their policies. The Cayman Islands, for example, has decided to end its registration of foreign-owned vessels. International management is also important where some of the Caribbean islands are concerned. According to the U.S. Department of Commerce, it is important for the cat that countries such as Barbados and Trinidad take part. The islands also play an important role as spawning and nursery areas for North Atlantic fish stocks as well as being key transshipping areas for swordfish and other species. The most important port for this is the port of Spain in Trinidad and Phillipsburg on the island of St. Martin. Swordfish, tuna and billfish are the most common species to be shipped through these islands. Below is an outline of the islands in the Caribbean that are fundamental to the industry. Let's explain how fish are caught throughout the Caribbean. A cast net, also called a throw net, is a net used for fishing. The net is cast or thrown by hand in such a manner that it spreads out while it's in the air before it sinks into the water. This technique is called net casting or net throwing. Fish are caught as the net is hauled back in. Stationary traps, or pots, typically made from wood, wire netting or plastic are used to catch crustaceans such as lobsters and crabs. Though the size and shape of traps may vary, all feature a cone-shaped entrance tunnel through which a crab or lobster is enticed with bait, but cannot escape through. It is also used to trap fish. Traps are usually set overnight and retrieved by fisher folk during the next day. There are three major types of fishing line employed today by the nation's anglers, monofilament, braid, and fluorocarbon. There are pluses and minuses for each line type, and there are many fans of each. Anglers are passionate about their line choices. A fishing line is a cord used or made for angling. Fishing line is generally as durable as and comparable to a string. Important parameters of a fishing line are its length, material, and weight. Spear fishing is a method of fishing that has been used throughout the world for millennia. Early civilizations were familiar with the custom of spearing fish from rivers and streams using sharpened sticks. This method of fishing is still used today by fisher folks especially when fishing along the coastline. A fishing spear can be described as an implement with a shaft and barbed point used for catching fish. Spear fishing is a spear with a shaft and barbed point for throwing, used for catching large fish or whales, a strong line is attached to it. Trolling Trolling is a method of fishing where one or more fishing lines, baited with lures or bait fish, are drawn through the water. This may be behind a moving boat, or by slowly winding the line and when fishing from a static position, or even sweeping the line from side to side, for example when fishing from a jetty. What are some of the problems facing the Caribbean facing the Caribbean fishing industry? 1. Climate change, temperature change, 2. Pollution. 3. Overfishing 4. Fishing exerts significant pressure on marine ecosystems globally, altering biodiversity and food web structures, and affects the ability of the international community to meet its sustainability goals. The impacts of climate change interact with the existing problems of overfishing and habitat destruction, driven largely by excess fishing fleets, coastal development and market expansion. 
the impacts of climate change interact with the existing problems of overfishing and habitat destruction, driven largely by excess fishing fleets, coastal development and market expansion. Aquaculture is developing rapidly, with the potential to supersede marine capture fish supply. Overfishing, the loss and destruction of habitat, marine pollution, and the warming of the sea temperatures is endangering the oceans and their ecosystems. How can the region manage these noted problems? Aquaculture is developing rapidly, with the potential to supersede marine capture fish supply. Yet, the full understanding of its impact, including its long-term ecological and social sustainability, is unclear. We should note that, sustainable fisheries in the future require the further development and strengthening of international fisheries law, as well as the overarching international framework for ocean governance. It is being suggested that, as a region we, establish laws which governs the fishing industry. In addition, individual countries throughout the region should, regulate fishing seasons so as to not encourage the depletion of some fish species. Establish fish sanctuaries which allows for the breeding of fish species, and regulate the methods used to catch fish, example making it illegal to use dynamite fishing. Thanks for watching. And listening. Bye.